Hi, I'm Rev Myron. I'm a minister through Pathways of Life, and I've been a Course in Miracles student for 40 years. Um, I'm going through the text um, a paragraph at a time for the most part, and I'm asking Jesus to clarify for me. And then I'm writing from that clarity as I do with the daily lessons. So um, that's what I'm doing today. So let's get started. I'm looking at chapter one, section one, principles of miracles. And we're on paragraph five, which says miracles are habits and should be involuntary. They should not be under conscious control. Consciously selected miracles can be misguided. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you a couple of stories of how this happened for me. The first one was when I was still working and I was with a customer and his wife. She had some very serious physical problems and was in a lot of pain. She was seated at a table and he was seated next to her. I went up to say hi to him and had the impulse to lay my hand on her shoulder to allow healing to take place. My hand immediately became very warm and I felt energy pass through me to her. This was not something that I typically did. In fact, never did. <laughs> so it was a very big surprise for me. I don't know why her and why then. I don't know what that was for or why it was for me to do. I never discovered what difference it made. I was just following guidance. I wonder how often we make a difference to someone without ever being aware of it, simply because we are in a state of miracle readiness, a desire to be used without interfering. Another time I had an, a similar experience, I showed up at a customer's office one day expecting to visit with someone I liked and enjoyed being around. However, she was very unwelcoming and I suspected something was wrong. She gave off a strong vibe of wanting to be left alone. And my every intention was to say, hello, goodbye and leave. <laughs> my brain was telling my body to turn when my mouth opened and I asked if she needed to talk. She looked like she was about to send me on my way when suddenly, if not still a little reluctantly, she agreed. We went to the back room where we wouldn't be disturbed and she shared some disturbing news and upset both physical and emotional. I had no idea what to say. She's not a course student or even someone I knew on a personal level which was a good thing because since Myron had nothing to say, she had to step back and let spirit speak. I wondered what I was supposed to say and it seemed that I was to say very little and simply listen. Then I was directed to pray with her and spirit gave me the words to use. Afterward, she expressed her gratitude and I knew that I had been helpful, not because of anything I did, but because of what I had allowed to happen through me. I was in a state of miracle readiness and everything else happened without my conscious assistance. I've had this kind of experience often, but I've had the opposite experience also. I've had times when the ego mind decided it knew what was needed and what should be said. There's an arrogance to that kind of thought, even when the arrogance is disguised as helpfulness. I think that miracles should not be consciously guided because that would mean thinking and the ego is in charge of that activity. I'm ready and willing to be the vessel through which the miracle occurs. Even that will happen. And then that will happen smoothly, effortlessly and perfectly. The miracle may happen without my awareness and often happens through me without my understanding of why or how. It's all rather lovely. Thank you for looking at this miracle principle with me. If it was helpful, please like it. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. I'll be back soon with another principle. And later today, I will be adding lesson 144. So watch for that too. <laughs>